Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions. Today I'm going to try installing the beta of Sequoia on my Mac Pro 6,1 using OpenCore Legacy Patcher Beta 2.0.0. So we're going to download that. This is really just a test run. And the first real release of Sequoia will be released by Apple on September 16th to all users. But seeing as this is the final version of the beta, I thought I'd give it a test run. And this video is sponsored by iTechGuy, AI tech advisor for iDevices. This is an app that you use like ChatGPT, where you ask questions about your Mac and it will use AI and search the internet to get you the best possible answer to help you with your tech question about your Mac. And they have given me a free OLED Steam Deck to give away to one lucky subscriber. And all you have to do is leave a review on the Apple App Store. It takes a couple of days for it to show up. And once it does, take a screenshot of that, email it to me at maxsoundsolutions at gmail.com, and you will be in the running to win the OLED Steam Deck, which I will be announcing in my very next video, probably next week. I was away in the UK and we didn't get that many reviews from the last video so they asked me if I'd do one more video about it and I said sure why not. So we will announce the winner of the OLED Steam Deck in my next video and now on to the Sequoia install. So I downloaded the pre-release of OpenCore 2.0.0. So both of these things are in beta. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this on a production computer, something you use every day for work. I happen to have a few test units lying around. So I thought the Mac Pro 6 comma one would be a good one to try. And I previously had Sonoma installed on my Mac Pro 6 comma one. So once it's downloaded, we're going to run OpenCore Legacy Patcher, and we're going to put in our username and password, and then it's going to install additional components. So we're going to wait for that to finish. And of course, you want to be using a wired keyboard and a wired mouse. You don't want to be using Bluetooth, and you should be connected via Ethernet because you may lose functionality of your Bluetooth and your Wi-Fi. Not sure about that yet, but usually that's the case. And sorry, I should have done a screen capture of all of this instead of using my phone. Next step is to create a Mac OS installer. So we're going to click on that, and as you can see, there is the Sequoia Beta installer to download. So we're going to download it, and of course, you need to be on OpenCore Legacy Patcher 2.0.0. You do not want to be using an older version, 1.5.0, to do this install. You have to be using the latest 2.0.0, which should be getting released to the public very soon. So we're going to skip ahead and just let this finish downloading. So now that the download is finished, open Core Legacy Patcher is going to ask you, do you want to create a Mac OS installer? And we're going to click on yes. And we're going to click install Mac OS beta, which selects the one that we downloaded into our applications folder. That's where the installer went. And now it's going to say, select a USB drive you want to erase. So we're going to be installing this onto the thumb drive. And this was a previous thumb drive that had Sonoma and OpenCore Legacy Patcher 1.5.0. When I did that install, now I'm going to be completely wiping it to copy Sequoia onto the thumb drive. So we're going to select a disk 2, Patriot memory, 63 gigs. It's a 64 gig USB thumb drive. And we're going to click on that. It's going to say, are you sure you want to completely erase it? And yes, we do. And so now what it's doing, it is building the Mac OS installer to make it bootable from the thumb drive. So it's transferring that 14 gig file from our applications folder onto the thumb drive, making it a bootable install so that we can then also build our OpenCore Legacy Patcher and then do the install of Sequoia. So we'll let this run and we'll jump forward. 
Okay, so now it's finished creating the installer and it now asks us if we would like to continue and install OpenCore to this disk, meaning the thumb drive. And the answer is yes. So now it's building OpenCore and it asks us, do we want to install the OpenCore configuration to disk? And we say yes. And we're going to select, very important, the thumb drive, not our boot drive. So you can see the EFI, it's very small, 209 megabytes. Uh, it mounted it on the desktop, onto the right there. You could see it mount, and now we're installing OpenCore. And now, this is very important, this is the blessing part. If you're familiar with Martin Lowe's OpenCore package, this is where we bless OpenCore and it will not work without blessing it. So we have to reboot and hold down the option key. So this is what we're gonna see after we reboot and we wanna select the orange drive, the EFI boot. That is gonna bless the thumb drive with the current version of OpenCore 2.0.0. The other drive that you see, the EFI, that's the internal drive in the Mac Pro that has my old version of OpenCore. So don't get confused. You want to select the thumb drive, not your internal SSD, to bless the new version of OpenCore, which we have installed onto the thumb drive. You can just leave the old drive alone. So use your arrow keys on your keyboard to move away from the install macOS beta and select and hit enter on the USB EFI boot, and the computer will now reboot. So what's interesting to me after I rebooted is it went into recovery mode, and there is the macOS installer. So I'm not quite sure why or how that happened. I just held down, I mean, after doing the hold down the option on the EFI, I just restarted the Mac but it automatically went into recovery mode, uh, which normally it does not do that when you're just doing a regular OS install with OpenCore Legacy Patcher, I believe. Of course, I'm pretty new to OpenCore Legacy Patcher. I was always using Martin Lowe's OpenCore for many years. But uh, anyway, here we go. We're gonna hit continue to install macOS Sequoia Beta, or Beta, as some people say. So now it gives me the choice of where to install the beta. And I am going to select my internal SSD, of course, not the thumb drive at this point. We want to install it on our Mac. So I selected my internal SSD. This is now going to basically write over my Sonoma install and we're gonna let it do its thing, and I'll be right back once the computer is done installing. And it looks like the install was a success. Here we are with Welcome to Mac, and uh, we're gonna hit that Continue button down below. And we get a little warning saying that we're booting from the external thumb drive where OpenCore is located, and would we like to move it to our internal SSD? And yes, we would. So we're gonna hit OK. And now we're going to move our install of OpenCore from the thumb drive to the internal SSD. And it says, if you would like to boot your Mac normally without a USB drive plugged in, you can install OpenCore to the internal drive. Would you like to launch OpenCore Legacy Patcher to install to disk? Yes. And it's doing its thing, rebuilding OpenCore. You can see that it's knows that I have a Mac Pro 6,1, and we're gonna select the Evo Plus 2 terabyte. We do not wanna install it on the thumb drive again. We wanna install it to the internal EFI of the Mac Pro's SSD. So that is what it's doing now. I'm sorry for the shaky camera. I should have done a screen capture on this instead I was using my camera, just cause I was kinda of winging it, you might say, so. Not the highest quality of videos here, folks, I'm sorry. And we have to reboot and hold down that option key yet again. Why? Because we are now re-blessing OpenCore to tell the computer this is where it's located now. So we're gonna reboot, 
holding down the Option key, and now instead of selecting the USB drive as the EFI to bless, we're going to be selecting the internal SSD of the Mac Pro, uh, and this is the last thing we have to do. So we're blessing open core on the internal SSD. And there you can see it. That is the USB drive. We don't want to select that one. We're going to cursor over with the, the uh, arrow keys and select the SSD. And we're going to hit enter. And that's going to bless it. And then the computer is going to reboot one more time. And once it's done doing that, we're going to select Macintosh HD and we're going to boot into that. And bingo, Bob's your uncle. We are now running Sequoia on my Mac Pro 6,1. And I will be installing it on my Mac Pro 5,1. So stay tuned for that. The process should be pretty much the same. And uh, please subscribe to my channel. Give me that thumbs up. I know this video was kind of sloppy, but it's late and I just kind of threw it together quickly. We're running Sequoia on a Mac Pro 6,1. And hats off to the OpenCore Legacy team. They just keep the old Macs going, don't they? It's really an incredible feat. And there is a donation button on their site, and I highly recommend donating if you're using OpenCore Legacy Patcher to keep your old Mac Pro alive and up to date. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.